Well, hey there, YouTube fellow silver stackers, silver pourers, silver enthusiasts. AG Ender back again with you here in the shed. Going to do another couple of pours. I want to do a little bit more in the how to here. So, for those who are interested, hang in there. We're going to do a couple pours for you, show you what I do to get some nice lines in there because that was something early on that I kind of struggled with was getting the lines. So, First off, you want to make sure the mold's warm. You don't necessarily need it glowing red hot, but you want to heat it up. So I'll get the torch going here and get that heated up. I don't believe the silver is going to take me all too long to heat up since this is a smaller mold, only about two ounces. And especially right now, being that it's 50, 55, 60 degrees, you want to make sure the molds are hot because if you start pouring in 2,000 degree silver, they do have a tendency to crack and split and break because of the heat shock. So I'm going to let this heat up and I'll come right back. There's not really any explaining to do here to the heat up. Just get the torch on it and let it do its thing. Again, you don't necessarily need it glowing hot, but you can get it pretty much as hot as you like. So we'll let that heat up. We'll get some silver heated up and come right back. So we're ready for the pour here. I've got the silver nice and hot. The mold should be nice and hot as well. And when you pour, make sure you just pour nice and steady. You don't have to just slam it in there fast, but you also don't want to go so slow that it cools before it gets the full pour. So here we go. So this one, it's got a little bit of extra flux there on top. I don't always like to do that. Most of the time it polishes off just fine. And you can see the lines I got on it with the torch sitting on it like it was. Put that in the water. Now there's a couple ways to make the lines. That's one way. Another way is you can shake or tap on the mold, like so, as it's cooling. The problem is I'm not quite set up to where I can do that. That's a lot easier to do when you have an electric furnace. Zoom back out. Turn the light back on. And you can see the lines that we get there. Now I'm going to do one here where I don't use the torch, at least not one sitting on it, because you can also use the torch in your hand if you're using a torch, and that can get your lines in there as well. So let me heat up the silver and come right back. Okay, we got the silver ready to go here. Almost. This is a stage where you want to kind of check and make sure the silver is nice and hot and it's the pouring temp not just the melting temp and you can usually kind of swish it around like maybe an egg in a skillet where it doesn't stick to the sides anymore and that's when it's ready to pour so here's the other way I use to get lines in it with the torch that's in my hand like I kind of went toward the middle on this one I actually have a little bit of a crater right there in the middle because the way the torch was blowing the silver down throw that there in the dish in the water and here's how this one turned out so I'll get a little polish on this one also and come back and show you how they look. I did polish up this one just a little bit while the silver was heating up. It didn't quite take this off, so I think I'm going to have to get a little container of the acid to eat that away. And I'll give you a, an idea 
on how long something like that takes. Sometimes it takes longer, sometimes not as long. It all depends on how thick that layer of flux is there on top. So I will see you in a moment. a piece in there. I've got roughly a 50-50 water to muriatic acid mix in there. It's 318 right now, so we will see how long it takes to eat away that film that's on top. Got this aside out of the way, and I will come right back. It does show it was a fairly thin layer. It is done, and it's nine minutes later. And this is an acid you can touch. You will notice, of course, if you have any nicks or cuts, it will sting a bit. But make sure you get the water. You just rinse it off. Rinse your hand off. No big deal. We got the paper towel here, something to dry it off with. And there we go. There's the same little hexagon bar without any of the flux on it. I've had other ones that have taken an hour, two hours to eat it all off because it's pretty thick. Um, sometimes you can see where it was. There's a little mark that it leaves, especially if they're like drops, how they form. If they're little round beads, those tend to leave a little indent where it eats away. So there's that. I will come right back and show you what I do in the way of stamping. Here's the first one that had the film on it. I've got it set for troy ounces. And we come out two dead on, two ounces. So here on the back side, I like to find whatever's the biggest spot because my logo stamp is fairly large. And it looks like here on this bottom side, how I have it set up right now, that's the best spot to throw the stamp. It still could give me a little bit of trouble. Actually, I think I'm going to turn it around and do it on this, this side. It gives me a little bit flatter area. I know before I said this, but firm. You don't have to smash your stamp into the piece. Just nice and firm. Sounds harder than it is. And there you go. It's a little tough to see with the way the bubbles are, but it is in there. It got the full full stamp. All the letters are visible. So then you decide where you want to put the numbers. Since this is two ounces, I'll grab my number two here out of my box. And I'll just put a two. And then Oh, hey, find my Z. And if you need to have yourself a block of wood or something, so you can test and make sure you've got the mold the right or the stamp the right direction. You don't always pick it up in the right direction. I've had plenty of times where I've had a number or letter upside down, and then that kind of screws up the entire piece that you just did, and you've got to report it. So there's that, and then my 999 stamp. Now this one happens to have where the logo is. That's the way you want facing toward you. That makes it upright. Find a spot for that, for the 999, depending on how big yours is. One nice firm smack there, and there it is. So I'll get this polished, and you polish the backside a little bit, and that fills in the letters. It's called rouging, I do believe. So you can see the letters so they stand out a little bit better. We'll take a look here at the other one. See what it weighs out to. Wait for the scale to turn on. 
and then set it to troy ounces again. And that one there left a little bit in the dish, I guess. It just lost some, but we're at 1.98 ounces on this one. And this one, I got a lot smoother here on this side. So it doesn't quite matter where the stamp goes here. So we'll do this here nice and firm again. A couple of times. And it all shows up there. The glare makes it a little tough to see, but there you go. And here we go. Here's all the stamping done. So I'll come right back and show you how everything looks polished and cleaned up and ready to possibly move on to a new home. So hang tight and I'll see you in a moment. They are polished up. You can kind of see here around this edge where that film was, but it looks good still. And of course, this side with the lettering, numbering, and the weight, the stamping, all shows up nice and clear. And this one, got even rounder lines and a nice shiny crater there right in the middle. It all takes a little playing with and get the effect that you want in each bar. But that's just how I do it, how I go about it. Others have their own ways. So make of it what you will. Hopefully this does help somebody out there and you can get to pouring as well. So hang in there. Don't get frustrated. It will take a little time to get the hang of it. You'll re-pour pieces plenty of times. So just have fun with it. That's all I can really say. So until next time, the AG Ender signing off. Thank you all for the likes, shares, comments, subscriptions. It's all greatly appreciated. I will see you all next time. Have a good night.